Hi everyone, Patrick Dickinson with Water University here. Today we're going to be talking about your irrigation controller. If you don't know where this is located, it most likely is located in your garage or close to your garage. It will say the brand on the outside. You open it up and voila, there is your irrigation controller. Don't be intimidated by this guy. There's very easy, simple settings that you're already familiar with, especially those of y'all that set an alarm to wake yourself up every morning. This technology is very similar. You're setting an alarm for each zone to come on, and then you set how long you want it to run. It's as simple as that. We're gonna run through some terminology to help you be more successful with controlling your controller. Setting your controller in the run or auto setting of your controller is telling it to go. It can run from there. All automatic controllers are required to have an operable rain and freeze sensor. You'll see here where it says sensor, you can turn it to active or bypass. Leave it in the active just in case you forget to turn off your controller during rain or snow or sleet, and this will turn it off for you. Sometimes it's as simple as turning the dial to off when there is rain or when it's freezing outside. During the winter months, we're holding moisture longer in our soil, so it's not necessary to supplement water. From there, you can see all the different settings that you will be able to set. Setting date and time, just like on your alarm clock. Your program start times, most controllers will have up to three to four programs. It's like having three to four controllers in one, so you can set multiple start times and run times on different zones. Then you also set station run times. This is you telling that station, or some of y'all may know it as your zone, how long you want it to run. From there, you can set the days of watering. So this will tell you, based on water restrictions, if your days to water are on Thursday and Sunday, you don't want to set any other days outside of that. However, if you follow all of our information online and our website, you know that it's recommended watering once a week with one inch of water. That's what that catch can test helps you determine. There's also on some newer smart controllers, a seasonal adjustment. This allows you to change the percentage. During July, August, some of our hottest months of the year, this may stay at 100%, but going into January or February, when your controller may be off, you can also adjust that to less of a percentage. Now, this particular brand does have a setting for cycle and soap. What this allows you to do is to set the zones on one program for the length of time they need to water. The controller will then run multiple run cycles through the system for you automatically without you having to calculate when they need to start and when they need to stop. At the back of the face of your controller, is going to be a small button, a push button that you can take a writing pen or a small screwdriver to, and you push that button in and hold it for a few seconds. This will reset and clear all the settings in your controller, allowing you to start over and eliminating those ghost programs running in the background. As you can see in this zone, station one under program A is drip irrigation. To achieve half an inch of water, I would need to run my drip irrigation for 75 minutes. So I can increase this time to one hour and 15 minutes. My station two under program A is a spray system. So I can increase this to 24 minutes to achieve half an inch of water. My program three is a multi-stream rotor spray zone. I need 50 minutes to achieve half an inch of water. This one is set 50 minutes. My program four is a rotor zone. This I need to run for 52 minutes to achieve half an inch of water in that zone. From there, I can set all my zones, depending on the type of zone they are, to the correct minutes for half an inch of water. After I've set my station run times, I then move into setting my days to water. As you can see here, my two days of water that I could water under my municipality is Tuesdays and Fridays. Knowing how much water you're putting out, I could water once a week. So I could eliminate one of these days by moving through different programs and again using the plus and minus signs to eliminate different days of watering. After I've set my days to water, I can then set my seasonal adjust. During the hottest times of the year, I would leave that at 100%. If I do need to water during the winter time, I can reduce that percentage 
to even 50% here, depending on the time of the year. You can see here, every month of the year, I can set a different percentage. Under my cycle and soap setting on this controller, I can set station two, which is my spray station, which is set at 24 minutes for half an inch of water, to run up to four cycles, so six minutes times four is 24 minutes, with 30 minutes in between each setting. There are many different controllers out there. Their settings, their dials may be slightly different, but the technology is the same. So refer to your owner's manual. If you don't have your owner's manual, you can get it online and refer to it for your specific controller. We at Water University recommend running your controller manually, being present and involved like we used to before the automatic controller. If you want to know how long you need to run your system weekly based on average rainfall and soil moisture, sign up for watermyyard.org for weekly alerts on how long you need to run your system. And remember, your automatic sprinkler system is there to supplement the lack of rainfall. When we've had rainfall or we have cooler temperatures, turn your system off. On average, spray zones have an average runtime of 24 minutes to achieve half an inch of water. This can be broken up into multiple run cycles with the cycle and soak method. So you would have four cycles of six minutes. Rotor sprinkler heads have an average runtime of 52 minutes to achieve half an inch of water. This too can be broken up for cycle and soak. Multi-stream rotor nozzles have an average time of 50 minutes to achieve half an inch of water and drip irrigation, which runs off of gallons per hour, has an average time of 75 minutes to achieve half an inch of water in your landscape. For those of y'all in the market for a new controller, you should look for the EPA WaterSense label. This tells you this controller has met the water efficiency standards of the EPA's WaterSense program. Remember, your irrigation controller is there to supplement the lack of rainfall. When we've had rainfall and we have enough soil moisture, it's as simple as turning your controller off.